When we saw you guys coming over the horizon, it was, it was like, oh God, we've been saved. It was the most amazing feeling because we honestly did not believe that we would survive another 24 hours in the current situation. We had no idea what to expect, but when we saw that big gray ship coming, it was just relief. <laughs> it was. We thought it, we had it bad during the entire trip, and then that 24 hours of being towed. <laughs> Did you not? That was the scariest moment in the entire trip. And when we saw you guys, it was like, are we gonna be saved? Because <laughs> it's been a couple hours, and when we saw you on the horizon, we were just like, yes! <laughs> we're here! And then when we heard you, and you're like, see him, see him, we're just like, can you hear us? Can you hear us? And they're like, yes, we can. And we're just like, we're being saved. And then this you kept it. going past us. And we yeah, had to call like, your bridge and say, do you realize yeah. that we are in your stern starboard and you have passed us? And they said, yes, that's part of our procedure. And I said, okay, okay, we're, okay. we're going to make it. Because after so many times of having people turn away from us after hearing us, we're just like, please, 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 please realize that we're still here. And when it was confirmed, we were just like, okay, just check it. Everybody on the ship knew because they were doing their job outside. <laughs> <laughs> um, Eternally grateful. So tell so me great. about the plan of the trip when y'all started out. Where you started and what was the plan for the trip? We started in Honolulu, Hawaii. We started in Honolulu, Hawaii when? on May 3rd, 2017. Yep. And we planned a roughly 18-day moderate cruise speed trip to Tahiti, Moareia, and Papeete. And from there, we wanted to actually just travel around the 20,000 or so islands in the South Pacific. We expected the trip to take roughly six months because by November, you have to leave that area for yeah. hurricane season. So we knew that we would be back in Hawaii by October. Yeah. And when did things go south? When did the, the first night. The first night. We got into a Force 11 storm, and it lasted for two nights and three days. And when we were through with that, we were empowered to know that we, we could withstand the forces of nature. The yeah. boat could withstand the forces of nature. And we decided not to return back to Hawaii, but to continue on in our journey because we believed that everything sh quote unquote shook out and we'd be all right. Yes. And the Evolution storm is when the masts first went. Uh, spreader? The spreader actually, uh, oh. the bolt holding the spreader to the, the root collar at the mast bent. Yeah. And we realized that it was starting to shake. And about 700 miles away from Hawaii, it finally went clink and I said okay we're, we're, we can probably nurse it you know down to the next major island in Kiribati yep. and we'll be able to stop there and, and seek safe haven and get up on the mast and fix it but when we got to Kiribati the boat was too big to get into their lagoon so we decided to continue to travel south we were a little we were more than 600 miles off course at this point, so we decided to go to the Cooks. And upon entering that area, we found ourselves in a 10 knot current going west with only the ability to sail at four knots going east. So we were traveling backwards, and we knew that most of those islands in the upper chain are small atolls, reefs, but we decided to turn around and go back north, whereupon we got into a white squall uh, and it was a pretty serious uh, around the end of May 25th and the storm was had dropped copious amounts of water and it flooded the cockpit which actually ended up flooding the ignition and the starter for the boat so we no longer had that ability to start the motor and we got pushed into what's called the Devil's Triangle it is an area 160 west and about 
zero degrees at the equator where boats go in but they very rarely come out and if they do there are no people on them and we learned that that was a, uh, a tiger shark location and the tiger sharks figured that we had entered their living room and we were not leaving fast enough and they decided to let us know it was time to proceed forward but us being the land lovers that we have been and the greenhorns in the sailing world did not understand their language not at all when did y'all realize y'all weren't going to uh, be coming to going to tahiti when was that realization the 10 knot current you before we turned before we turned around to come back north yeah may. yeah may. Still, in, still in may when i went all night pointing east and going west and she was like we're not going the right direction and it wasn't until her shift when she was during the day and she was like we've been pointing east this entire day going west and i was like thank you because i thought i was going crazy <laughs> and how did y'all survive like what would you want to about supplies tell us about that we had uh, two water makers and the first one failed and yep. we put the second one in and then ended up cobbling pieces from the first one to make the second one work. And we had been told by okay. people who had sailed this route before mm -hmm. that you could run into some serious problems and if we thought we only needed a month of food to pack three, and we figured we might need three months of food so we packed at least six. Uh, what yep. I thought if we judiciously spared our supplies would last a year <laughs> and we've used 90% of them in six months. Yep. And what was that for? Uh, we had dry goods. Yes. We found that cans don't work. <laughs> um, so beef jerky, oatmeal, rice, pasta, uh, dried fruits, nuts. Pretty much a, ve a vegan and vegetarian diet is what we survived on. Yes. We did run out of dog food and the dogs <laughs> turned out to really like human food. A lot. <laughs> what has been, I mean, obviously you were so happy when you saw us and you knew you weren't going to be stranded. What was your emotions going through you when you stepped foot on a ship? I saw y'all come off, y'all gave each other a hug as soon as y'all took the life jackets off. Tell me what those emotions were that you were going through. How do you describe the color blue to a blind man? Yeah. <laughs> I mean. How could you describe it to people who really, really want to know? It's relief and elation and joy and utter sadness because that was our life that was home she built that for the last two and a half years it was a reefed boat and she made some she made oh my hair in your mouth <laughs> what are you eating okay. on me <laughs> everything <laughs> but okay it, like i was saying she spent two and a half years building that boat and everyone was laughing at her saying, oh, this is not what you do. But she knew in her head, it's like, this is mine. This is my life. People told me throughout my entire life, I couldn't do anything. Here I am. Like, she couldn't, like, nah. <laughs> okay. Don't go there. She took something that was broken and made it whole. It saved our lives multiple times throughout this whole entire trip. And the utter despair of having to leave her. So yeah, we were really relieved that you guys were here, but Nymphy was our, our baby. And um, she's strong and uh, we have the bilge on and we're just hoping to get her back. The guys, uh, we, we weren't sure if we were gonna get yeah. Reveille at 0600 and have to stand up and, and, and do jumping jacks and run around. Yeah. Or, or if, if we were gonna be quarantined into a tiny corner. We knew that we'd be the new kids on the block and that everybody would know who we are, yeah. but we don't know anybody else. And we don't know the rules or anything. And, and we knew that stories would fly that had nothing to do with the actual truth. And the people would come up to us, you know, kind of sideways and be like, we heard you're from China. And I'm like, no, no, we're not no. from China. <laughs> so, um, but you guys, opened your arms and your hearts to us and gave us things like toothbrushes and soap right. and 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 helped us figure out how to get from place to place on the boat and you're so human and 
and pure and, and clean. I mean, yeah. wow. I, I've never seen anything. Well, okay, okay. My, <laughs> my bathroom on the boat is as clean as yeah. this boat, but just about nothing else in the world is. Yeah. In a million years, I was joking with someone about 10 years ago, and they said, what <laughs> happens when you go out to sea and you get broken? And I said, oh, the Navy will come save me. No lie. It really happened. And then it happened, and we were just like, wow. <laughs> we saw that a decade away. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? Thank you. Thank you. Like, really, we're so grateful humbled.